Hey, this is Steven with TechMaker TV. This is building a link shortener with Ruby on Rails part five. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and start working on our controllers a bit. So I'm gonna close all the rest of my files down and I'm gonna set up a new folder in my spec directory called controllers. So in our new controllers folder, I'm gonna create a new file and I'm gonna call this um, links controller spec.rb. I'm going to require the Rails helper as we've been doing all the other times. And we're going to do rspec.describe and we're going to say links controller and we'll say type controller. And I'm going to just check that my link spec, that's the syntax, yep, so okay. So let's just run this and we'll get a failure. So uninitialized constant links controller. So you can run a command to create the controller, but because of the way we're doing this, I'm actually going to go ahead and just create it here. So we're going to create a new file, links controller, RB, and we're going to say class links controller. And I'm going to go ahead and inherit from application controller because I know that I need to do that. Okay, now let's run our test again. Okay, so we're back to green. So if we head back over into the spec, um, well, I just realized I just misspelled controller. So let's save that. Okay, so what we want to do in here is say that it can create a short link, essentially. So it can create a, well, let's say it can shorten a link uh, provided by a user. Okay, so if we want to interact with our controller we have to use some kind of HTTP request and because we're trying to actually create something in the database um, we want to use a post request so let's see how should we do this we can do post um, and let's go to the uh, let's just say we're posting to the links path and we want to give it params and inside of params we want to have link and then we're going to have another uh, hash like this and then we're going to say um, original URL is what we want and I'm going to actually grab my same original URL I've been using okay so I'm going to say URL equals that thing, and then my URL is just URL. So let's run the test and just see what happens, because it may blow up. And of course it does, because no route matches links. Okay, so let's go over here to our routes. By the way, if you're using Atom, and I think this also works in Sublime, you can hit Command-T, and it'll let you do a search. So you don't actually have to go scrolling through the left sidebar. So I don't have any routes to find. So naturally it's going to blow up and I'm going to say post uh, links and I'm going to reference my uh, links controller and I'm going to say um, it goes to the create action. So let's run this again and see what happens. No route matches action links controller links. Huh. So I've got to learn to read a little bit more carefully. So right here when it says no route matches, I was expecting it to give us a routing error. Um, but in actual fact, you can see here it's trying to go to the action links. And so back in our spec, we're saying post slash links. And this is the right syntax for a different for the default Rails testing framework, but since we're using RSpec, 
and we're in a controller test here, we can say post create and tell it directly we want to hit the create action. And so since it's specifying here that the create action lives at this URL, it will hit this URL, I believe. Um, so now if we run it, it's going to say uh, the action create could not be found. Um, and I don't actually know if this is running through the routing system or not. Let's comment this out and see. Um, it is throwing an error that there's no route, so I assume that in some way it's going through the routing system. Um, I'm still trying to learn the ins and outs of how RSpec works. So anyway, um, so now we have this post create. There's no create action, so we can go over to the links controller. We can do def create, save that, and run this and see what happens now. So now we're actually green. All right, so if you hear sirens in the background, uh, that's in my background, not yours, just a heads up. Um, okay, so what we need to do now is actually make this test do something interesting. So what we can do is say something like, um, well, we want to actually get back a new URL, and or we want to get back a new link object, rather, and we want that object to have a code and so on and so forth. So what we can do is say, um, let's see, link equals assigns link, which will make sense in a second. And then we'll say expect link dot original URL dot to equal URL. And then we'll say, um, expect link dot valid to be true what else can we test in here we can test the length of the code um, the link dot lookup code dot length to equal seven is that what we said now this all may not stick around. You've seen before that sometimes we write these tests before we really have our uh, everything framed properly mentally. Um, but this should get us started. So let's run the test and see where it breaks. Okay, so assigns has been extracted to a gem. To continue using this, add a gem Rails controller testing to your gem file. Okay, that's new. Let's try that. Um, so we really just need this in test. I'm just going to toss it here under our spec. We'll run bundle. And hopefully that doesn't take it forever. Okay, now let's run our spec again. Okay. So now we're saying undefined method original URL for nil class. And so why is that happening? So assigns is basically um, looking for instance variables that have been set. So what we could do is say at link equals a string and call it Bob. And now we should see something like undefined method original URL for string. Yeah, exactly. So what we really want to be able to do here is if we open up our shortener class, we want to do something like this. We want to say shortener equals shortener not dot new. And we want to say, um, let's pass in the original URL. That's what's required, right? It takes the URL and it gives the link model as a default argument. So we don't have to give that. And then what we want to do is just tell it to generate the short link. And then we want to say at link equals shortener dot generate short link, right? So what we need is this original URL. And so the original URL right now, and we'll refactor this to look more like what Rails typically looks like in a second, but this is params link original URL. So let's run this and see if this worked. Okay, yeah, so we're green again. 
Now let's look at what's going on with this. So to make this sort of kosher, um, what we really want to do, well, in this context, I'm not really sure exactly what would be kosher, but what I'm going to do is just use the typical thing you see. So you'd say link params, and then you would say uh, params dot require link dot permit original URL like that and then here what we can do is say link params we're going to test again see what happens same thing and instead of all this I'm just going to pass this straight in right there and we should be good to go so now our test should all pass cool so I'm going to say that I'm expecting to use this create action as a JavaScript endpoint. So instead of having like a redirect or something right here, what I actually want to do is uh, essentially render a JavaScript template back to the server. And you'll see what all that looks like later. Uh, I think in the next episode we're going to start looking at the front end. Um, but basically what I want to do is say, well, first of all, I'm going to go back to my test, not that one. Um, and we're going to expect response to uh, render template create. And let's see what this does. Okay, expect and create, but rendering with brackets. So I actually don't know off the top of my head what that would imply, but let's go ahead and just try to add our template here and let's see what happens. So it's a new folder and it's called links after the name of the controller. And then we'll create a new file, create.js.erb. And let's see if that does anything. Okay, um, so it was expecting text HTML and we gave it JS. So let me think about this for a second. I think I've found the issue. So what we want to do is actually give this post uh, some headers. So I'm going to say headers equals I guess I copied and pasted it already from where I wrote it a minute ago, somewhere else. And then here we're going to say headers, headers. And let's see what this does. So basically what we're trying to do is tell this, hey, this, this request is JavaScript actually. So let's run this and say unknown keyword headers. Okay. You know, instead of guessing, I'm just going to look this up really quick. So I found a couple of tips. So first of all, our spec apparently doesn't support this um, method, but we might be able to do something like request.headers.merge headers. So let's try that and see what that does. That is a little bit weird. Um, Okay, so it didn't actually take like that. It doesn't look like. So I'm going to roll back on that and then try the other thing which I saw, which is just to remove this. But then instead of using the post create here, we actually have to pass in the original URL that I was trying to do. So this is getting a little bit strange to be honest with you. So. We're just going to see what happens. Um, I'm going to find method post for our spec. Yeah, this is a little bit weird. All right, so I think I've finally found the answer, and this is a little bit strange. Um, but what we have to do is set the env, the environment of the request to text JavaScript on this thing. So Honestly, this is not something I would have known without having to do a little bit of research. Um, I'll probably know for next time, but 
Anyway, so now if we save this, we should be green. Yeah, so basically what we're doing, and, and the way that this works is on the server you're telling it, hey, this, this incoming request is asking for JavaScript back. Um, and so nor the default is HTML, and so that's why you're getting this error up here that it you know it's looking for HTML. And we really want JavaScript back. So all we've done so far is essentially, I'm going to put this at the top, and uh, yeah, so essentially all we've done so far, and this is going to be where we're going to leave this, is we're just making sure that we are in fact creating and assigning a variable to a link, or to the, we're assigning an instance variable here to a new link object rather the other way around we're assigning a new link object to an instance variable we're validating that it is in fact uh, valid and working you could actually do one more thing here uh, link dot persisted to be true just to make sure it's actually saved to the database and then the last thing we're doing essentially, so we're doing some validations on the actual object, and then we're saying we want to make sure that you render this create response, which we haven't got anything in here right now, but that doesn't really matter. Um, I'm not going to do a ton of testing on like the actual front end stuff, so I'm basically going to go up to the point of controller tests, and then we're just going to build out the front end with what we've got built on the back end. Um, just trying to think if there's anything else I want to go over here, but I think that's about it. So. If we missed anything, we'll pick up in the next one and, and add it there. So with all that said, I will see you in the next episode.